Hello. I'm telling you, the first thing I'm going to say is, what the frack are y'all people doing up this freaking early? It's like, seriously. It's like, I mean, I thank you. <laughs> I plan on waking up halfway through the talk. So it's, when you see that startled look, you'll know it's like me just realizing, thank God I'm not naked. So uh, thanks for showing up. Also, uh, I'd also like to thank my sponsor. I'll be giving out uh, gifts that I stole from the HP booth because they left it unattended again today. Uh, so I will be giving out little gizmos and things and then this. So, And also thanks for the ex extra badge. I appreciated that. My son will love it. Um, so I'll, I'll be giving out those. Um, this is my talk. Steal everything. Tell everyone. Calls total financial ruin. You know, it's a feel-good talk. It's going to be awesome. Um, Jason E. Street. I have a lot of certs behind my names, as you can tell. Um, uh, what we're basically talking about, it's not about what I'm doing to get in, it's what security is doing wrong that's making it so easy to get in. Be it the people, like TSA, thank you for security theater, and I'll rant about that maybe later. Uh, or the actual, your, your incident response. Oh, something's broken. Well, this should work. So, uh, oh wait, and I just realized I have laser pointers. Look at that. That's piece of some shit, like that. Hey. A little bit about my, me, um, who wants to know about that? Uh, I got two jobs, a day job, night job. Uh, I'm blue team, I am a defender. I work in a cubicle and I monitor firewalls and IDSs, incident response. I build out infrastructure to protect it and I'm quite proud of it. I am not a red team, you know, uber ninja guy. It's like I do pr predominantly, you know, blue team stuff, defense. Every once in a while I get to do red team and every once in a while I get to break into stuff. So I explain to people, I handle incidents during the day. I create incidents for other people at night. So <laughs> works out. Uh, this is me in front of your building, uh, you know, on a Sunday in an industrial park for over an hour without being stopped by security. Thank you, because I look so cuddly. Um, oh, wow, see, that's the one I'm getting at. The kittens at the beginning was the warning. Okay, just to remind you and stuff, I'm adorable. Okay, so. So if I say something bad or mean or something like that, just remember the kittens, okay? And like when you see pictures like that, just remember, you know, I'm adorable. Uh, this was me trying to get a job that I was totally overqualified uh, for, you know, which that's what my present employer thinks too. But, you know, it's like I didn't get the job either, so, you know, too bad, but I did get all their data. So it was a win-win situation. Um, these are my two favorite uh, pictures. This is, uh, when I go on an engagement, I like to wear warning labels. So I stole a car in the shirt that says, I'm a liability. And I actually had to tell the guys, like, uh, I can't get in this person's car because I'm stealing it. I'm a liability. <laughs> it's like, uh, but the person who owned the car didn't give me permission to get in their car. Just someone gave me permission to try to steal it. Thank you for that. Uh, this is my favorite, though. One of the most secured locations I've ever seen in Manhattan. It's like right across the street from Ground Zero. Uh, SWAT teams, it's like they had eight guards in the, the elevator lobby before you go into the business lobby. And that's me inside the business lobby with a valid badge wearing a Your Company's Computer Guy shirt. <laughs> right. And uh, I did that with a nice four Gmail. We'll show a little bit about it later. But that was that has got to be. I want that in my little funeral slide stuff. You know, eulogy and stuff. You know, with all the pics. That better be in there because that's one of my most proudest moments right there. Um, I, like I said, I have a CISSP assert, so it's like I have to have a Sun Tzu quote. There it is. It's the rules. You know, infosec talks. Uh, these are the contents. We're starting with the intro. Surprise! We're not even halfway done with that yet. Uh, we're going to talk about the one fact, uh, we're going to talk about the two rules, we're going to talk about uh, the three outcomes and what happens with those three outcomes. Hopefully a good discussion or some questions and I will throw away stolen merchandise, which he will then be, you know, accomplices to. Thank you for that. Um, why this talk? Well, quite frankly, this talk occurred because this is part two of my talk from last year, where I did the 36 strategy from social engineering. Because I got a lot of feedback after that talk saying, you know, Jason, it's like, uh, that's pretty basic. You're, you know, you're not really that much of a social engineering guy. You're, you're basically calming these people and getting in. It's like, you're not really, I mean, that, that's not really, you know, where's the NLP? Where's the body language? Stuff? And my, my response to them and stuff, you know, besides crying was, you're right. <laughs> I am not an expert at that. It's like, I am not an LLP, you know, mind ninja. 
there are people way better qualified, way better professional at social engineering than I'm ever going to be in my whole entire life. I'm doing this stuff for fun. I have a 100% success rate in every social engineering engagement I've been on. We're not talking about how good I am at this stuff. We're talking about how bad our defenses are because I keep getting in with it. Okay? And I'm not talking about, let, let's not count our, you know, the children are our future. So let, let's talk about this guy. September 2nd, September 2nd, this guy, 17-year-old, working in accounts management in Florida at a hospital. And you know what? He went to be a physician's assistant, getting the action in the ER. You know, he saw, you know, scrubs, and he's like, that was awesome. So he went to, you know, college. He went to medical school. Oh, no, I'm sorry. No, he created a different badge and actually performed CPR on a patient in cardiac arrest, gave physical examinations to new uh, male patients, and actually restrained a combative uh, patient in ER. And he was, I mean, he was, he finally got caught because he kept, was pestering them too much. So if he just kept his mouth shut and just kept, you know, prescribing Vicodin for people, I think he would have gotten away with it. So um, there's that. That's, that's the reason why we're having this talk. 3.30 in the morning, yeah, I'm glad you're comfy, but do you really want the, your attacker to take a picture of you sleeping on the job? That's not cool. But at least there was somebody there at that engagement. This one, they didn't have the budget to have a security guy in there, so uh, they had all their security monitors, you know, I'm sure being taped. There's me in a white T-shirt and Pepsi pajamas, and, you know, that's not going to end well, uh, taking a picture of your security booth. Great security. But let's start with the one fact. The one fact is I'm getting in. When I started on this engagement, it's like as soon as I opened up the lobby door and I saw the secured area, so I, I, I just walked in like I owned the place, pushed the buttons, and I got in. What buttons? One, three, five. Predictive numbers. I would have tried five, three, one, or three, one, five, or three, five, one, but it was one, three, five. Uh, this was taken in Paris. This was taken in Berlin. So therefore, since I wasn't hired, we're going to assume that those were the numbers, not that I would have actually tried them hypothetically, or that was the costume area for Hotel uh, uh, Paris uh, Euro Disney. It's like, a, so I could have been goofy, or I mean, not I am goofy, but I mean in the costume. So um, that would have been cool. And you're thinking, it's like, well, Jason, these are low-value targets, okay? Don't you hate it when people are, like, showing you these, like, low-value targets, like, oh, look how stupid they are. They did predictive numbers. You know that's right. Up until 1997, the nuclear launch codes were all zeros. Yeah, let that one sink in because I'm still waking up too. Any private could have gone to a missile silo that was doing the, uh, with, you know, those little missile silos that aren't supposed to be in Idaho and stuff, you know, and under the Astrodome. It's like, don't go to that. Shh. It's like uh, all they could have gone up to was the panel, pushed nine zeros nine times and launched it without even whistling. It's like, uh, <laughs> it's like, uh, so it's like, I mean, Predictive numbers, we like them and way too much. Also, I want to, uh, another thing about social media not being an expert, I suck at lock picks. I think they're awesome, I think they're cool, and one day I'm gonna learn them hopefully before my 11 year old does. Um, but I, I, I improvise, I try to make do. I was at an engagement, I signed in uh, at the receptionist, and when I go on these engagements, I'm a bad guy. I try to do bad things. So yes, I stole her pen. I'm a bad guy, I can't help it. And then the next thing I do is I go to the bathroom. It's like whenever engagements start, I go off to the bathroom. It's not because of how many freaking Pepsi I drink, which is a good reason. But no, it's like because I always get lost. Sometimes I will wander for two hours looking for that bathroom. It's like I don't know where they can find it. So I was in this secured area somehow, wandering in trying to find the bathroom, and I found the employee entrance. And this was like a million dollar secured facility and stuff, I was told by the former head of security there. Um, and I noticed at their door, had that little knob thingy on the, on the door, which the door would come into and it would latch and you're secured. And I'm like, awesome. And so I look at him like, if there's only some way I could circumvent that, maybe if I could, oh, I got a pin cap. So I put the pin cap on top of the knob thingy. And that's the technical term actually. And it's like, uh, and I shut the door. It shut perfectly. I waited 30 minutes. I came back in through that door and I was inside the secured area. So thank you, big pin. Here's another um, video. This is a video of me actually giving you the whole sum of my uh, lock picking skills. Or 
scratch your laptop and take some pictures. There we go. Here's me in front of a financial institution. There's their doors, totally locked. I suck at lock picks. I'm awesome with cardboard. And there we go. That was fun. Heat sensors, uh, heat sensor motion detectors for the inside of your doors are $90. These were 50. They really saved a lot on that 40 bucks. So good for them. Another thing I do besides, you know, trying to lock the, uh, pick the lock thingy, I will just try to, you know, have you convince yourself to let me in. I don't have to be a master locksmith if your security lets me in through your front door. That's what, that's what it takes. I use this email up in New York. Uh, the network admin was doing his job properly. He noticed an unusual amount of traffic coming from the CFO assistant's, you know, uh, computer to their main server. And uh, he went to investigate it. It's like I showed him this email. It shows some political strife between the, uh, the CIO and stuff, you know, so the guy just sends me into his office and like talk to the CEO for about, uh, CIO for about 10 minutes, and then the employee escorts me around to every other station so I can finish installing my malware to the uh, clients. So uh, I definitely appreciated that because now I'm way trusted because there's a guy there. The only thing worse than no security is a false sense of security. They're in the building right across the World Trade Center. They have SWAT teams. Like, if you're up here, you've got to be trusted. You've got to be the uh, okay. No. It's like that's one of the things that gets you because I've got two rules. None of them has to do with PCI. Congratulations. I don't care if you're PCI compliant. Sarbanes, Oxley, that other British dude, I don't care. HIPAA, HIPPO, it's all good. I just want to F you up. I'm going to be the worst possible thing to happen to you at the worst possible time. Easy peasy, that's all. I just said easy peasy. Okay. Um, so these are where I got my two rules from the, uh, the movie Serenity from the uh, show uh, Firefox that uh, Fox canceled when they died in a fire. Um, it's two simple rules. I ain't the misbehave. Let's go be bad guys. I walk in and I try to see what I can destroy. I see what I can mess up. And pretty good at it. So um, here's the, and this is uh, basically what I'm trying to be. I'm these guys. This is not a new concept. The whole red teaming, the whole pen testing, the whole physical compromise thing, this isn't new. This was a movie from 1992, for gosh sakes. And now the pay's better and you get health insurance, so yay. Another way to do this is from 2008. The best way to get management excited about a disaster plan is to burn down the building across the street. There you go. I like to take this moment to introduce myself. Hello. I'm the fire. <laughs> so let's get to the fun stuff. Let's talk about stealing, you know, besides HP stuff. Um, this is a really good engagement. I call this a trifecta of bad because, of course, I stole the laptop. I stole 30 laptops on this engagement. None of them had laptop lock cables. They didn't think it was necessary. They were in a secured building. During the exit interview, I saw them buying laptop lock cables, so good for them. Uh, phone, steal it, clone it. It's like in a, a badge so I can come back in if I, my arms are tired. Uh, there was a guy in Houston in the late 90s who actually had a cart, stole over $50,000 worth of office equipment going back and forth and stuff, you know, stealing uh, printers, computers, you know, personal belongings. Uh, 2010, we had a guy in Tallahassee, Florida, who actually spent 18 hours in an office building wearing khaki pants and a collared shirt. And he's still not caught, and guess what? He's gonna be more successful next time, you know why? He also stole a suit, so he'd be dressed better. So it's like, there you go. Oh, I forgot I left this one in here. This one, I feel a little shame on this one. I feel a little bit bad because I do have a CISP and we have a code of ethics, so please don't report what you see here, okay? Not the fact that I stole the laptop because the guy gave a power cable on it. He was giving it to me. I mean, I had to take that. And not because I stole the screwdriver and stuff, you know. It's like because, you know, I might be something bolted down I'd want to steal later, so I had to take that. No, the... Uh, I was hungry. I stole one of the cookies. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was, I got forgiveness later if that helps. Okay, hopefully that's a mitigating circumstance, but you know. And I love the fact that this guy was totally freaking oblivious to it. Um, <laughs> good, good teammates there. 
you know what? Security with that compliance? Person's got a laptop lock cable attached to the laptop. Check. User goes, yeah, but attaching it to something is hard. <laughs> Security's just checking to make sure there's a check there. And guess what? A thief is going to pull it to see if he can grab it. I'm the thief that's grabbing it. And you know what? It's like, like I said, not the best with tools, but I will get that mother off. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you how many hours it took to get that, but I will say Pepsi did come to the rescue on that one. So thank you. Predictable codes. You know, that this guy had it attached properly to the desk. He had it firmly attached to his laptop. And then he was like, you know that default 000, that's a pretty good code. I think I'll keep it. You know what? I think I'll try it. <laughs> it worked for the launch codes, exactly. So it's like another thing is, you know what they like to do? The very last digit, the very top digit, they'll turn, you know, ping, secure. Or the top one, ping, secure. I go around and I go, ping, it's mine. It's like, uh, and it's just that simple. So you got to make sure they're doing different codes. This one, and I'm not even joking on this one, I really feel bad about it because doggone it, he tried. It was firmly attached to the desk. He firmly locked it up on, on, on the thing. So I was not able to steal the docking station. <laughs> that, did not get, that did not get into my grasp, okay? It's like it eluded my, uh, my attempts of, of capture. Uh, I just had to settle for the laptop, so darn. Another trifecta. You got to love this one. I stole the, uh, the car keys. Yay. Going for a joyride. ride. The car's better than mine. Got a cell phone. I've got a purse. Please note, this is very important, you know, for my physical standing, I did not steal the lunch. Didn't touch it. What did I do, though? Let's take a break for a moment. Went to her car. Found out where her car was in the parking lot. I opened up the car. Took the car keys, put them back on her desk. I then went to her purse, got her driver's license, took it out. She goes back out home from uh, getting off work, goes back into the car. I'm in the back seat with a gun to her head, telling her I will kill her family and kill her. She does not go back into that building download all her company secrets, get all the information that she has access to, and bring it back to me. Think of the kittens. Remember kittens. <laughs> Employees need to realize that, yes, it's their belongings. Yes, it impacts them in a personal way, and it impacts their company. Show them that they need to understand that they need to protect their personal belongings just like they would protect it at their homes. Just because they think it's in a secured facility does not make it secure. Not just picking on the girls. This is a guy, you know, he had, and look at, he actually had his workstation unlocked. So he was like just dumping the data for me. And there's his car keys, and, and the, his car wasn't as nice, so I wasn't going to steal it. It's like, um, but still, I really do have lousy credit up until I met this guy. Uh, when you have this many frowny faces on a slide, you're just screwed. Sorry. There's just no, it's like uh, they're there to protect the compromise. Uh, I know, I love the SpongeBob one. It's like you think those were mine, but that was actually somebody else's. Um, I love this guy. This one actually has social security, so I could actually know exactly how to forge his, uh, his, his name. So thank you. Um, the valet that I stole the car from cheated. Once I compromise you and you know about it, it's like you're not supposed to tell anybody else about it. And he told the other valets, and it really pissed me off. So I waited until 2 a.m. when the two valets were overworked and they were go getting cars, and I stole three Mercedes Benz and a Beamer uh, in less than 60 seconds. So Nicholas Cage beat that, okay? Um, the look on the security manager's face when I handed them the car keys were priceless. And I, I can't show you the, the picture, but it's my desktop on my wall, uh, wallpaper on my desktop at home. But uh, it, it, was, it was beautiful. Um, so what are we going to do? Tailgating, I think, is one of the worst possible things that we can do. You know, it's like, and we got to teach our security awareness uh, to our employees to stop letting people in. We're in a polite society. I went to a secured facility. It was a federal building with bulletproof glass man traps, video cameras, an armed guard looking at you meanly. I mean, I think they paid them extra for the scowl. And it's like, and it's like metal detectors and x-ray machines. And I'm like, mother, I'm not getting in there. So I waited around to the employee entrance and held the door open for a lady. And she walked in behind her. I was a gentleman. You know, I held the door open. So of course I was OK, right? It's like, and I never tried that, that front door, though. Uh, if I do try a front door, you know what I'm going to do? Coming in a wheelchair. I got like four. I'm trying to steal money for you. Do you think I'm morally compromised because I'm going in a wheelchair? 
It's like, and, and trust me, are you going to be the douchebag who doesn't open the door for me? I'm going to be like, I mean, seriously, that's what happens. But you know what your response is? Yes, every single person deserves the same amount of respect. They better have a badge if they want to get into my building. I don't care what they're in. I don't care what their condition is. They better have proper access. I've got a great picture of my one-year-old son uh, in a costume for a Halloween party at the building I used to work at, and he had a visitor's badge on his costume. That was policy. And he was, he's a threat, trust me. It's like, you know, so don't let that well, one-year-old fool you, okay? So you have to do things like that. Another thing is, if you see something, say something. You don't have to go tackle the person. Please don't, because it might be me. Okay, so don't go tackle the person, but you have to at least report it to security, report it to management. Uh oh, here's all the kitten stuff now. Oh, okay, here's me waking up. Um, so let's get into the uh, the real fun, friendly stuff. I didn't clap, by the way. Just caused me. Um, Two thirty in the morning in a hotel. I love hotels. They're so easy to kill people in. It's like, um, but um, what's wrong with this picture? Besides the fact that I'm in there at 2.30 in the morning. No locks on the power. I have the worst case of OCD you've ever seen, okay? <laughs> I'm full on ADD, OCD. I, think I actually, when I write it down, I put the letters in the proper order, okay? Because it's just the way it's supposed to be, okay? If there's a button, if there's a switch, and it's on, I'm turning it off. If that switch is off, I'm turning it on. And by golly, if there's a red button, I'm pushing it twice. I just can't <laughs> help it. That's how I roll. So here I am. I've got a nice little uh, bucket of napalm. I've got some noxious poison fumes. I'm putting them in the ventilation system and starting the fire right here so it spreads up and it'll kill the most effective people. Um, but I'm not rude. I hate rude people. It's like, who wants to get woken up at 2.30, 3.30 in the morning and stuff with this loud, blaring sound in their ears? So I'll disable the fire alarm system for you, okay? So it's like, you don't want to wake anybody up. That's just, you know, impolite. And what's worse than a buzzing sound coming into your ears when you're trying to sleep? It's like throwing a bucket of water in your face. Gosh, who wants to get doused with water and stuff when you're in the middle of the fire? That's just, oh, wait, you might want that. Oh, too late. I've already turned off the sprinkler system. So, and I actually told the guy, it's like after the exit interview, and I showed him these things, I told him, it's like, I want you to understand, you did a very good job of protecting your customer data. It's like your systems are very hard and stuff. You know, it's like it was very good for an external attack. It was very hard to get to. I killed everybody in your hotel. <laughs> their data was safe. <laughs> the, their heirs, thank you. So um, bathrooms may be the most dangerous place in your, in your house, but trust me, kitchens, they're going to get you in the hotel. It's like because that's where I like to be at. Not, not, you know, just any hotel. It's like usually it's where I'm going to be at. Um, here's a nice, is there anybody from Malaysian law enforcement in the, in the room right now? Okay, we're going to say that I took a tour, oh, I'm sorry, took a tour of a uh, Malaysian hotel. Um, I show them afterwards, so that counts as permission, right? And th this is a little video just to show you exactly some of the, the things that you can find while you're in a uh, hotel. So let's go through this little tour here. I can already sense the fail coming. Um, I didn't cut it down. I didn't edit it. Sorry, but I didn't want you to say, oh, you just made it look cooler, Jason, by cutting it down. So I actually show you all the mistakes that I make, too, during this video. Like, I turned this way, and I went down this stupid hallway, and I ended in up in this room over here. I will tell you this, though. If I wanted to steal some tables, I was good to go. Okay. Unfortunately, I didn't think, you know, the tables were going to be sexy enough for this crowd, so it's like, oh, well, let me keep going because now I look stupid. So now I'm committed. If you're seasick or you get motion sickness, please look away now or take some Dramamine because this gets me even, okay? This is, this is a very long hallway. This is me walking down the very long hallway. As you can tell, long hallway is long. <laughs> it's like, uh, oh, wait, hold on. I'm still in the hallway. It's like, uh, when I see a door, quick, something cool so I look awesome. Here we go. Here's a door. Thank you. You now showed me that you've got a door that you want to protect. 
and then you showed me you're an idiot because you didn't lock it again. So now I know exactly where to go. What could be in here? I wonder. Oh, warning, hazardous chemicals. I did not walk in with an AK-47. I did not walk in with an Uzi or C4. I walked out of this room with napalm and poison. It's a four-star hotel. I mean, they give you everything. <laughs> so <laughs> awesome. Um, but now the problem is, how am I going to be carting this around? Where am I going to be going to get this stuff? You know, it's like I got to like, you know, freaking cart this around, and I'm hopefully it's not too far because I don't want to get caught with all this, you know, hazardous material. Let me turn around to see if I can find a place to use it. So I turn around, and oh, I'm in the kitchen. <laughs> that might be a good place. <laughs> Let's keep walking over here. Let's say hello to this guy because he was too rude and didn't say hello to me. I'm in Malaysia. I don't blend very well in Malaysia, okay? <laughs> so there's the uh, food supply. I poisoned your whole food supply. Even if you detect that your people are, why your guests are getting sick, it's too late. You have to destroy the whole thing. You've lost thousands of dollars. Sorry. No. It's like, uh, so here I am going through here. Here's the electrical fire that I would start. But oh, crap. Here's some guys here. They're going to bust me. I'm screwed. I got to initiate social engineering countermeasures. Hold on. That was the social engineering countermeasures. I walked by and went, hey, how's it going? <laughs> it was going okay, so I kept going. <laughs> so uh, now we're going through here, and I'm going, okay, I'm just watching these people. It's like, you know, one of the cool places about their data, instead of you know, protecting customer data, they're very good about protecting customer data. But the problem is, I don't have to go to your computer system if you put every guest's name and their room number on paper bo uh, paperclip boards and stuff, you know, it's like, uh, so you can give them room service. So now I know where everybody is staying. So that's cool. Now at this point, at the t when I'm walking around, I'm thinking everybody you're thinking that I'm thinking, you know, what I'm thinking is that it's like, Case, I'm not impressed. You're walking around, big whoop and stuff, you know, it's like, do something. So I thought I'd go talk to the head chef and the manager of the hotel. So I walk over there into his office. I've given you the Wi Fi cable, the evening cable. So I'm always doing a Wi Fi session. I always like to say that because no one questioned me. Like it's technological. No one questioned me. I'm wearing a black work shirt that says hacker on it in Malaysia talking to the head chef and the manager of the hotel. And yes, it got away with it. And I mean, but I mean, what damage really could I have done? I was just walking around. I mean, it's not like I had the, oh wait, I do have the hotel keys. <laughs> and, and as you can tell, it's authenticated because it's like, you can see the, uh, <laughs> you can tell those were mine. <laughs> so, um, but you know, I also had to update this because man, that freaking, DEFCON video got a lot of play and stuff, you know, so if you notice, I try to flip it up, I try to mix it up and get new slides, and I also wanted to update this, because it's like, we saw that, Jason, we saw the video, it's like, you know, so when I went into Hack.Lu last week in Luxembourg, I decided to walk through their hotel, too, <laughs> and I asked them, it's like, does entree interdite, that means come on in, right, I'm not good with French, they weren't amused, uh, but so it's like, but you know, it's, but this Europeans, you know, they've got a lax, you know, kind of, you know, environment. But you know, I like to keep the update. I update my slides. I like to keep them fresh. Oh look, say hi to DerbyCon. This is the hotel here. That's not good. It's like uh, that was a that was a really cool place to go. Here's a nice one. I was very quiet as I stalked her quietly down the hallway. Remember the kittens. It's like. Um, Exactly. <laughs> it's like, uh, I had to tell her, I did, I did stop to talk to her. We had a nice chat because I was doing my Wi-Fi assessment. I have an iPad, you know, it's magical. It's like, uh, and I've got a uh, Wi-Fi faux fum running. So obviously I'm legit, right? And so uh, we talked and she was very nice and I just kept doing my, my thing. Um, don't you love secured walkways that are supposed to be closed but they're not? So the network operations center right in the next building over it's like, they're running Vista, by the way, so good on you. Uh, and then there's some IP addresses, and then that's where all the security cameras are pointed, if you want to know exactly where that's at. And it, you can't see it during the day, but at night, they didn't invest in that thing. Um, 
curtains. Yes, it's like uh, might be an option. I'm just saying. So thanks for inviting me here. I, I understand why I won't be back, but you know, <laughs> it, it was fun. So some of the things that you have to do when you're doing uh, countermeasures, uh, quite frankly, is you have to practice. No one wants to think about bad things. They're bad. So therefore, if I don't think about them, they're not going to happen. Workplace violence happens all the time, unfortunately. It's there. I mean, for gosh sakes, I got this off of WorkplaceViolenceNews.com. How depressing is that? There's a news website for it. So you have to start working. You have to, I tell people, it's like, if you, you got to tell your receptionist. It's like if someone comes in that looks suspicious, the, you got to come up with a code word. The code word should not be, oh, my God, he's got a gun. We're all going to die. Panic. Effective, but maybe not cohesive and stuff, you know, to the nice, calm, inducing. I tell them, it's like, if you see something, a situation like that, you tell them, it's like, code periwinkle to HR. Mr. Car uh, not code Perry, Mr. Periwinkle to HR. Mr. Periwinkle to HR. Not for any significance. I just like saying periwinkle. But, you know, you get the hint. Just you know, make it a nice code. Also, practice. Practice with your employees. Practice your equipment. That million-dollar secured facility, when I was standing around for an hour, I noticed that if you go up this one side of this parking lot, you could bypass two of the cameras, and there was this third camera over this door that may or may not get me. So I was like, hmm, let me check on that. And I told the guy, I said, I think I can get in here. And it's like, you know, I got a lock-picking tool and stuff called a crowbar that I'm pretty sure I could open the door with. And it's like, you might want to check on that. And he's like, no, that camera will catch you. So we go to his secure room. It's a closet with a row of monitors. They're all turned off. He turns them on. The one camera that did not work was that one. I looked him dead in the eye, and I went like, hmm, I guess I'm not the only one that had that idea. You might want to check your inventory. I did mention he was a former head of security at that facility. Okay, good. Um, so you got to make sure that you're checking the stuff. You got to make sure you're checking your, uh, you're equipping your people, you're equipping your buildings, and you're making sure they're tested and that they're working. I would like to take a moment to say one thing: lay off the freaking Chinese. You think they invented espionage? My God, the French are proud of it. The National Director of Intelligence for the French government and stuff in the 70s said. We do U.S. espionage against U.S. corporations, and it is business is good. Paraphrasing, because I don't know French, and I didn't say it right, but, you know, you can check it. It's on the Internet. It's got to be true. So it's like uh, the French have developed espionage to an art form. They're so good at it, they caught the U.S. government, the CIA, doing corporate espionage on the French in the Boeing incident in 95. Everybody is spying on everybody. But we're not supposed to talk about that because they're our friends. Yes, I need those kind of friends. The French were so cool. One of the coolest things I think that the French did was they'd go to hotels that the executives were at, and they would provide a shred bin with an OCR scanner right above the blade. <laughs> How freaking awesome is that? So it's like, yeah, we can talk about Chinese and those three-letter things. It's like you like to sell products with, but I'm, I don't got anything to sell, so I'm not going to say the word because, again, stupid. It's like, uh, so if you want to be protected against UPT and stuff, you know, start thinking about your employees. Start actually having a proactive defense. Because I will tell you this right now, I'm an environmentalist. Do you know how many trees die every year due to those wasted papers you leave on the printer? That you leave beside the printer? Well, I'll tell you this right now. When I'm on an engagement, those trees will not die in vain. I'm taking them. I'm so much of an environmentalist, I'm going to take the printer, the print job that's printing out as it's printing right now, just because you might forget it. Do you leave that stuff on your desk? I don't know if you're going to recycle properly. It's going with me. Like I said, this is me frowny faces. You know, I got your secret sauce. You're gone. Game over. But you know what? That tree, that tree didn't die in vain. Another thing I love is policies and compliance. How freaking awesome is that? Because you know what? Because now we've got a place to put our top secret confidential documents that have to be shredded. But you know what else? Going to the shredder is hard. <laughs> Let's put it in a bucket and stuff, you know, and then it's like, and then we'll just, you know, go at the end of the day, and then we'll shred them all together. Thank you for telling me exactly where I need to go. DOD contractor office, you know, because in the offices, the executives are there. 
top secret, you know, those are the guys that will, you know, if I tell you, I'll have to kill you. So we can't let, you know, maintenance or, or cleaning crews in there. It's like uh, they can't be in there to, to clean that. So, you know, it's like a secured, secured area. But I'm a CIO. I'm not freaking shredding my own documents. I'll just put that outside the door for them to do that when, I, when I'm gone. So they leave the buckets outside their locked doors with all their top secret confidential information that has to be protected. I've got really big garbage bags. Thank you for those. It's not just uh, your company data. Um, she's really cool. She's got a great taste in books, by the way, as I can tell from Amazon, and I know where she lives. So I don't have to wait for her at her car. I'll be at her house. Well, I mean, I'm not serious either. But she is cute. Well, okay, forget that. All right, let's go. Um, here's some more stuff. This is like another secured area. This is really awesome. This I actually know how much her house is worth. It's like, so I know how much to blackmail or bribe her instead of, you know, to get my, uh, your corporate information. Uh, credit card statements. Um, I got addresses from employees. Uh, this was work product that shouldn't have been in there and caused an ETA incident. That wasn't my fault. Um, we got some computer stuff in here. There's a hacker con. It's like, uh, so hello, say hello to my malware, my USB drive. He's, he's all lit up and happy. Um, but it's just a workstation. It's not like you're going to get much from there. It's not like I put it in an exchange server or anything. Oh, wait. <laughs> Guys, I know where that thing's been. You don't want it in your exchange server, I promise. Okay? It's not going to end well for you. It's like Ask HB Gary. Okay? It's not good. It's like, uh, so it's like, so you got that. And he's like, well, it's just, you're just reading my email. And so, you know, it's like, that's not a big deal. Maybe. It's like, um, well, guess what? Me and the 25 employees that are now on your payroll that are getting paychecks, thank you. Because now I'm in your accounting server. And it's like, you know, but, but you know when you get in the accounting server and you get these hashes and you do all that, that stuff's hard. I'm not a technical guy. Okay, like I said, I'm not an Uber, you know, computer ninja. It's like, but I'm not going to try to crack your passwords on my five video cards. I'm freaking playing Unreal, okay? I'm still playing Unreal Tournament. What's up? Okay, thank you. It's like Call of Duty, freaking army, or whatever. Okay, so I'm not cracking the password of my video card. I'm just taking them off your monitor. And I want you to know, I gave them the benefit of the doubt. When I'm on an engagement, I thorough. I tried blank, leave blank, bracket, you know. <laughs> I tried that. And yes, a little piece of my soul died when it was in her. I was actually almost dealing with rocket scientists on a top security facility and stuff, you know. It was awesome. They actually had an upper, lowercase, optonumeric special character password. I was proud of them for a millisecond because it was hard. So they changed it to welcome. <laughs> I tried uppercase W because they're rocket scientists, but it, no, it was all lowercase. So it was a little sad. Um, there's only one thing worse than, you know, seeing me in Pepsi pajamas, ask my curial, or rogue clown. Uh, it's seeing me in a suit. Because I'm telling you this right now. If you make me get into a suit, I'm effing you up seriously, okay? <laughs> I'm not playing. It's like, no, no, seriously, I'm not playing. I hate suits, okay? So when I'm also, when I'm in that suit, you know, I'm wearing the Vesta Doom. If you want to know more about the Vesta Doom, you're going to have to see last year's talk, and I go through all the little different toys and stuff in it. Um, things like that. That's what I'm usually wearing in my Vesta Doom. I call it the Vesta Doom because I think it sounds cool and I'm really in my childhood. Don't judge, okay? <laughs> You're getting man hugs for gosh sakes. You can't judge, okay? <laughs> so it's like, but I've, I've got a new Vesta Doom 2.0. It's like, uh, I'll show it to you. It's like a pocket pocket. We've got, I was so well prepared here. I got this. This is part of Vesta 2.0. This is a encrypted USB key logging system that connects to a keyboard. This costs over billions of dollars to be developed by our government, given to me by someone in a three-letter agency with the express permission of having it as long as I told no one. <laughs> so, oh, this is, is this being recorded? Edit that part out. Okay, so it's like, so I've got this and stuff, you know, it's like, and I can detect anybody's keystrokes as soon as they boot up. It's like, 
virtually impossible to detect the malware or antivirus. Yes, I'm lying. I got it off of Think Geek. <laughs> Think Geek, a gadget website. Let me put this in perspective for your CIOs and CEOs and stuff, you know, who may want to be interested in you about this kind of stuff. Let me put it in uh, something even the CISSP can understand, the risk matrix. Available at a geek and gadget website near certainty, okay? <laughs> Being able to log the CEO's keystrokes, I'm going with catastrophic on that one. <laughs> okay. That's not good. I think, you know another thing I'm coming in with? I like video. Yeah, I do. It's like uh, video pins, four gig video pins. Love those. I carry an ex uh, extra ones, you know, because I like to keep one in my pocket. See, I like to keep one in my pocket, and I like to keep uh, one in your receptionist's cup. I like to keep one in your CEO's assistant's cup because everybody's got that pin cup, you know. So it's like it's in there recording. So thank you for that. Um, sometimes I go in as the tech guy. You know, I'm coming in to repair something. Got to have a flashlight. Eight gig USB recorder. What I like about this is not only am I connecting it to your computer and downloading all your data, I'm then taking it with me. I can even leave the flashlight. It's all good. Uh, that video from Malaysia, the reason why it was so uh, choppy, I'm sorry. It was from my four gig audio video recorder watch. When I go into your facility, I am a walking, talking Google streetcar, okay? <laughs> It's like I'm recording everything. Now, also, this stuff, I mean, I have to be serious. This stuff is not available just to the general public. You have to be in a certain subset of group to be able to get access to this kind of technology. And, I mean, congratulations, though, you are in that classification because that means that group is, you know, frequent flyers. <laughs> Once again, I need to stress this again. I am not a ninja with this. I am not a major expert. Stop listening to rock stars and listening to your Bob from accounting who's pissed off at you and he's going to that uh, conference in Boise, Idaho again that you made him go to last year instead of Sally which she was supposed to go there and he says, oh, I can log the key search on my boss's computer. Oh, I can like take the uh, customer records and stuff, you know, during a conference meeting and sell them to my competitor. Oracle. It's like I can do things like that. This is not unfeasible. This is not rocket scientist material. This is stuff that's available on eBay, which is actually where I got some of the equipment. Deal Extreme, Think Geek, Sky Mall, if you want to pay overpriced and stuff you know and be stupid. It's like you can get this cheaply. The watch was 50 bucks, and it's a dependable watch. It takes time really well, you know, besides stealing your data. So it's like you've got to understand that this is what we've got to worry about. Stop trying to worry about that zero day that goes into that one product and stuff. You know, that person wrote on a pen test just to show you that he could break into your system. Worry about SQL injections that are on your website and stuff, you know, that leaves your company open up to the Internet. Sony. It's like, you know, that's what we have to worry about. It's not just these high-level attacks. It's all these low-level. I tell people, okay, I don't have to outrun the dragon, okay? I just have to outrun the hobbit because the elf's already in front of me. Okay, we're not trying to be the most leaders in the crowd, okay? But you have to make sure you're taking this stuff seriously. You have to make sure that your company's taking it seriously. Another device for my, uh, my best of doom is the Pony Plug. Thank you, Pony Express. I love this. This was actually taking in a live engagement. I went to four bank branches on the West Coast. I was supposed to go to more at four because I was successful four out of four times. They told me to stop, you know. Actually, I think the Kadunk was actually the one phrase. But it's like, a, but I had to stop. I came in in a blue shirt that said DEFCON on it. I come with warning labels. Used a fake name, fake company, fake number. They let me through the teller line. Oh, the reason why, it was a very good reason. It's like because I'm checking the power voltage regulations and stuff, you know, because there's brownouts at the main facility and we want to make sure that all the uh, computers are uh, properly power surged and grounded. And I also need to have this device check the voltage regulation on your network to make sure the computers are, I don't know what I'm saying. I'm just rambling off and they believed it. If I would have gone in there with a shotgun and a ski mask, every single person would have done everything exactly the right way. They would have performed properly. They would have performed the way they were supposed to because they're trained for that. They're not trained for the geek and stuff that's coming in with a the laptop. They're not trained for the guy who's got a Zoom tablet with Backtrack 5 running that's connected to the, the Pony Express that's like ponying them before they even get out of the building. 
That's what's happening. So we have to start training our employees. If they don't understand the threats, whose mistake is that? Yes, I'm ranting a little bit, sorry. So another thing I can do, it's like, because Pony Express sometimes does a little notice it. It's like, uh, but you might be prepared for that. So you can just use it when, when someone's got a company computer. Thank you. Apples are so awesome, aren't they? They're, they're so helpful. They're like, oh, there's a wireless connection. Yes, I'll connect you to that. You must want an internet connection. Oh, you're connected to the LAN. Well, you may want connection to the corporate network as well. I'll help you with that as well. Oh, I don't mind bridging. Yeah, I'll do that for you. So, yeah, that makes it a lot easier for me because that was helpful. What are we doing? I will tell you the one thing that we need to stop doing, paper. Think of the trees. And if you say, screw nature, think of me because I'm stealing it. Okay? But you got to think of something like that. you got to start understanding that this stuff's out there. Corporate espionage is happening, and it's not some advanced attack coming from China every single time. So what do we do? I, and I have to be honest, I'm not trying to rant too much, okay, but I have to tell you I am tired of one simple phrase. Stupid user this. Stupid user clicked on a link. Stupid user went to a website. Stupid information security for not giving them the proper security training and awareness to understand not to click on it. That's what it should be. If I've got an employee that starts their first day and they've never driven a car and have a driver's license, and I tell them, here's the keys to my Bentley, go uh, do an errand for me, who's the idiot when the car gets wrecked? We have to start, to, yeah, I'm, someone just like called me an idiot, but okay, someone, we have to understand, we have to start training our employees. They don't learn by writing something down. You have to make sure that you're giving them examples. You're teaching them in, in ways that they understand. They are intelligent enough to have that job, give them enough intelligence and enough information to protect themselves when they're online. One of the things you can do, show them how to protect their home computer. Show them how to protect their family's computer. Because if they can start protecting their family's data and their family computers, maybe they'll start protecting your data and your computers. But if they don't even understand how to take care of themselves, how are they supposed to take care of the stuff that you've got? Start training your employees and treating them like they're part of your security department, because they are. From the mailroom to the CEO, they are part of information security. And if they don't know that, once again, your fault. I'm not blaming users, I'm blaming information security. We need to start owning up to that and stop trying to push it off on those guys. We need to start educating our people. Then, once we've done that, then we can start making fun of them again. Okay? So that's it. Any, um, there are some good links, and now I get to drink Pepsi. Seriously, that's, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> if anybody's got questions, I got free stolen HP stuff. Yes. Okay, well, actually, no girls throw better than me. But still, um, no, every engagement I've ever been on has been with permission. It's like I've never, I will never try to kill you unless you pay me first, I promise. Okay? Did they tell you? So he just admitted in a public forum that he broke a web key. Could you turn the camera over to him, Adrian, so people can make sure they get the... <laughs> because you, you, she wasn't expecting it. There's only, I mean, that is terrifying. You know what? My neighbor leaves their door unlocked every day when they go to work. So does that mean it's okay for me to go inside and, and be waiting at their kitchen table? When, when they get home, because like, hey, guess what? I showed you that you have a security vulnerability. You forgot to lock your door. Congratulations. You're welcome. Is the next speaker already here? Everybody gets, I've heard people talking about how talks are running short. I still got another 30 minutes. This talk actually goes for now. Okay. I will conduct the questions outside. It's like I will stand out there as long as you want to talk to me, and I will ramble for hours. Ask anybody that knows me. So it's like, so we'll go out there. <laughs>